This is Keith McGowan, the Outboard Dad, here to help you have a better boating experience. We're continuing on with our 150 horse Hope to Rebuild. That's what I should call it now because we're still evaluating. All right, middle starboard side coming out. If I'm not mistaken, this was the one that had the most damage. So again, as I said, I'm gonna put this back the same way it was. I'm gonna put this back the same way it was. Put this back the same way it was. And we'll label it. So let's take a closer look at this piston. I think this is the one that was had the major failure. Yep. So it doesn't look like it spit a ring. I don't see any chunks of the ring missing from this. But they are jammed up here, so it's possible that when this overheated, so if you look closely right there, you can see where it grabbed on the inside of that port. And then it pulled probably just some of the ring coating or the surface of the ring off and just little bits of the ring came through. Don't see any other damage other than that, of course, than the piston being no good. So let's check out the rest. So let's see what the bottom one looks like. Minor scratches, not a big deal at all. This one's very nice and reusable. We're definitely gonna clean it up. The rings move nicely in there. I'll still clean out the grooves I'll use an old ring that I break and I'll scrape out the grooves just to make sure there's no carbon left in there. But this one's in nice shape. Now let's check the port side. We're continuing on with our Mercury 150 rebuild. Uh, well, I should say evaluation. We're not done yet. When I used to do this, uh, when I had my marine shop, I would go ahead and uh, take like three or $400 from a customer and say, okay, you know, give me some cash. I'll do a complete tear down. That'll cover the cost for the evaluation. Then I'll let you know how many pistons and what the total cost of the rebuild is going to be. So no different here in my shop now. So we're going to continue on evaluating the port side and let's see what those pistons look like. And then we'll inspect the block a little further just to be sure everything looks okay and the bearings. And then we'll maybe make a parts list at Pro Marine. So as I'm labeling these and going through, I'm watching my crankshaft journals, looking at them closely. I'm also going to, now that we've got a couple of the bad pistons out, I want to rotate that crankshaft around, see if we still hear that knocking noise. It seems to me the knocking noise was due to the bad pistons. So let's label this and check this one out. This one is the top port side, also took some damage. So this one's gonna have to be replaced as well. So it is possible he might have run some cheaper oil through it for a while there. You know, it looked fine on the top when we looked through the cylinders when we pulled the heads off, but wow. And we're gonna inspect those cylinders when we flip this black block over too, and we're gonna see equal damage there. So yep, that's another piston that's gonna have to be replaced. And now when I spin this, still hearing a little plump, 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 plump. Of course, there's only two left, and the center one is the one that took the most damage. So let's get this one out, see what it looks like. So now let's check out the port middle piston. These are the ones that took the most damage and had the problem with that leaking fuel line. So it looks like this side wasn't as bad, but still going to have to be replaced. So that's so so far four new pistons we're going to need for this motor. So this won't be a cheap rebuild, that's for sure. Let's check out the last one.
So the other thing I'm doing is I'm looking at the inside of my connecting rod journals and also the inside of my caps for my connecting rods, making sure there's no pits or scarring in there when I put these back together. So I wanna be sure the total of what my damage is. Sometimes those little metal pieces can get caught in here, especially if the motor was run for a long period of time with a rod knock or with a bad piston, then you have more debris floating around and more chance of ruining a rod. So right now, as I look at my crankshaft, I don't see any damage and I'll spin it over and get, you know, I'll put my cheater glasses on and, and look a little deeper. But right now I'm not seeing any damage. They all look really nice. Next, we're gonna get the crankshaft out and check our main bearings. Last piston is out. Let's take a look at it. See what it looks like. I have them all lined up now here. So this is the last one. Sure enough, so that's five new pistons. We might just do a whole kit for this. So once we get our crankshaft out, we're gonna evaluate that, see what that looks like. We'll get that on the bench here. That'll be next. And we'll check the journals, the main journals, main bearing journals. And then we'll also look, flip the block over and look at our cylinder walls. So let's get this crank out of here and see what this looks like. Make some room with my, my clean rag here. Get some tools out of the way. Get the top bearing off all the way. Look at the sleeve for that and the race and the journal on that. I'm gonna turn this over, look at each one. So far, all of those journals look pretty good. Not seeing any nicks or anything in them. So that looks good. So let's get this crank out of here and we'll look at it a little closer. So we'll get our block flipped over so we can start to begin to check our cylinder walls a little closer. We'll do that. But let's take a look at these bearings. I wanna be sure again with my main bearings, I wanna take them off and put them back on the same way. So these have a little split ring around them that hold them. Sometimes you can take a little screwdriver and push it out of the way. And then these are, this will split into two halves. So I can see that looks really nice. This looks really nice. Journal looks good. I'm gonna put this in its right orientation and spin this around just to make sure there's no damage that I'm missing. Looks really good. Now we'll go ahead and just put this right back on. Now I'll definitely be cleaning all this. I'll probably wrap, wrap this up in a new rag. Again, I'm being careful that I'm putting these bearing caps or these uh, races back in the same exact way that they came off. And then we'll put our ring back on. And we'll check the other one. Don't see any marks or damage or any heat issues. Turn the crank over here. And look closely at it. Yep, looks beautiful. So our crank is good. All right. So now we're going to wrap this all up. Let me change my camera angle here so we can take a close look at these cylinders. So now we want to do a really nice close inspection of our cylinders here. So the best way we can do this, see this is the O-ring that goes around the outside. Just watch your eyes when you pull it off because little bits can come off. We'll get our flashlight in here. Take a close look. At the very least, they all need to be honed. Really not seeing major, major damage. I do see a small chunk. So this was probably the worst one here. This was our starboard side center. So I do see a, a really small chunk out of the, not sure if you can see that there, out of the um, sleeve. Not enough to cause a problem. But what we're gonna have to do next is we're gonna to have to get in here with our honing stones 
and see how many thousandths we're going to take off in order to clean these up. And I will measure first before I order pistons. I'm also going to take a look at these pistons and make sure they're standard pistons and someone didn't already, you know, do a rebuild on this. I doubt it because uh, usually you would see an 020 or an 010 for the sides oversized. So we'll continue on with that. We'll get some of our boring tools out. First thing we're gonna do is wrap up all of our parts in some nice clean rags and get them stored away so that when we start doing honing here, we're not getting anything dirty. So that'll be the next steps. Please like, subscribe, send me any comments that you have. We'll continue on. We're gonna you know, go through a lot of these parts, as I said, and we're gonna just continue to wrap them all up make sure they're nice and they stay nice and clean because we're going to get into making a little mess here when we start honing this block i'm going to show you how to use a sunnen an 111 110 very similar tools on a variable speed drill that i got from harbor freight it's a low speed so that i can have control over it and we're going to start by measuring we're going to get our some measuring tools out our, our uh, dial bore gauge out we're going to see where we're at we're going to look in the book to see where the factory spec is so can we go further? So that's a subject for debate, right? If we go too far, your piston slops around in your cylinder, you lose a little, some compression. I know guys that'll put oversized rings in. I'm not a big fan of that. These motors run and get hot, right? This one got hot, it got lean. I want the best chance of longevity. You could run over a bag while you're out there on the water and unknowingly overheat your engine, your alarm goes off. Do you want it to be so tight built that it's going to spit a ring or, or have scored cylinders just because you ran over a bag? Or because maybe when you're out in the driveway last time, you forgot to put the hose on and you burned up your water pump a little bit and you'd overheated when you got out on the water and then you found out your water pump was, was cooked. So I want the best chance of longevity. And I know a lot of guys say, hey, no, you can't do that. They all have to be exactly the same. Get an engine block to a machine shop and take it back, just the block, and measure it and see what you got. I'm talking about a quality shop because these guys know what they're doing. Not all of them, some of them have had issues. I've taken in motors that were supposedly rebuilt at a reputable place who says they use nothing but OEM parts and find WSM pistons and other parts in there. Um, so again, there's a lot, a lot of debate on how to do this. I'm not building racing engines. I'm building reliable engines. And this is what has worked for me and what has been taught to me over the years. So my ring gap, I'm gonna check in the book of what it's supposed to be, but I'm gonna make sure that all of my ring gaps are the same. I might be a quarter of a thousands off on my cylinders. It's very rare to be that precise and perfect with the machining of a blind hold cylinder. Um, but I'm going to make sure all of my ring gaps are going to match so that I have even compression throughout the engine. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to continue on with this. We're going to clean up some parts here. And uh, please like, subscribe, send me any comments you have. And looking forward to getting this project moving forward. What we're looking forward to or what I'm looking forward to is the first time turning that key and cranking this sucker up. So it's going to be fun. Looks like we'll be able to do a complete rebuild. We still have some more inspecting to do. But it uh, looks like we're going to be able to move forward with this one. So have a great day and hope to see you out on the water.